Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at Salem Evangelical Lutheran Church of Kissel Hill. It is wonderful to be with all of you this morning, whether you're here with us in person or worshiping with us on the World Wide Web. Just a few announcements before we begin our service. First, uh, I want to say we are getting very, very close. We're within striking distance of our goal for the bell tower. Uh, we are just about $4,000 away, uh, but that means we need to raise $2,000 from the congregation since we have a generous match currently in place uh, from an anonymous member of the congregation. Uh, so that means, like I say, if we raise $2,000, uh, we will have the $4,000 we need uh, to do all of this long-awaited work on our bell tower and ceiling. I want to thank again everyone who's given up until now. Uh, I really think within a few weeks this will be in the past and it will be something we can look forward to seeing above us when we're worshiping. Since there will be a few weeks when there's scaffolding up there as they're doing work, but we'll still be worshiping in the sanctuary each and every Sunday. So that was the first thing I wanted to share with you. I also wanted to share that we are now uh, getting a choir going here at Salem again. Uh, everybody who's interested in singing with our choir uh, should find a little canary yellow sheet next to the tracker. Uh, we're hoping to have a choir of mixed voices. Um, and this is going to be a choir that's not going to sing every Sunday or on any kind of a schedule, but rather only for a few specific festivals during the church year. So it's the kind of thing where it's not going to be a weekly commitment for you. It's not going to be an additional, um, you know, obligation. You're not going to have to sit apart from your friends and family uh, if you don't want to. Uh, we are just going to have a nice opportunity for those who want to sing uh, to join their voices in song. And in preparation for each of the festivals we're going to sing for, we're going to meet in some evening. Uh, Marilyn and I were talking about Thursday evening, but that's something we're going to discuss with the people who are interested uh, to rehearse for that particular festival, the one anthem we're preparing. Uh, so if that interests you in any way, shape, or form, again, please find that canary yellow sheet uh, out next to the tractor for the bell tower in the narthex. So I wanted to share that with you. Uh, I also wanted to share with you uh, something that I am now not remember. <coughs> what did I say for service now? Do you remember? <laughs> Maybe that's the table. Yeah, okay. Maybe I'm not forgetting. I, I now remember what I forgot for first service, but it's not relevant, which is that <laughs> we were having our three Sunday school classes again instead of just the two, uh, which I forgot to mention, but again, it's not relevant at this service. But if uh, you are out there on the World Wide Web and want to join us next week, uh, or you're here and want to join us next week, uh, we are now having both of our adult classes meeting again, both the class that meets and discusses the text for that Sunday, as well as the class uh, that meets and does more of a thematic study. We have just began today uh, a new study on the Gospel of Mark. So I now would like to call on uh, our wonderful Barb Lawrence, Chair of the Fellowship Committee, to share a Temple Talk. Hello, everyone. I'm Barb Lawrence, and uh, this committee, the Evangelism, or the Fellowship Committee, plans events that involve the whole congregation and, and, and our community. So what we've done in the past is we've had an everybody's birthday party. We, of course, we've had a few bingo nights, which are always a big, that's always a big turnout. We've had a few movie nights with a popcorn bar. I've noticed that all of our events involve food. <laughs> In some form, there's always food involved. We've had a church picnic. Uh, and I was thinking maybe that everybody is welcome to bring 
their ideas to uh, the event, the fellowship committee, anytime, because this committee wouldn't exist without this congregation. There would be no need to have one if we didn't want to get together. So I think it's very important that we bring all ideas in from everyone. Because I can always use all the help and everything because I don't I don't get around much. <laughs> so there's a lot of planning set up and cleanup and everything that's involved. So we need everyone to help. And uh, so anyone is feel free to join us. I'd like to set up a meeting next month. So anyone feel free to join us and come with your ideas. Because we like to do fun stuff. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Barb. And for those of you who were not here last week, uh, we are having temple talks two minutes or less from each of our committee chairs uh, at the beginning of both of our services in preparation for a time and talent survey that we're going to do with the whole congregation in mid-October. Uh, so if there's anything that piques your interest uh, that's mentioned in any of these temple talks, just kind of make a mental note of it and remember to mark that box on your time and talent survey and then the rele relevant committee chair will get back to you. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to the prelude.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Read responsively from Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down at my enemies. A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? 
Show by your good life and your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in the peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What does it mean to be great? In ancient Greek, as well as in English, this word has many meanings. But all of the meanings come from the same source, the same idea. That something that is great is bigger, larger, grander than other things of the same kind. That its size, its spaciousness, is somehow proof of its outsized importance. In our culture, we often say that bigger is better. We supersize our meals and our bank accounts, our homes and our cars. We want to be great. To, as the poet Walt Whitman said, contain multitudes. But how do we do this? What is the path to true greatness? What makes us greater, larger, more capacious than others? What allows us to contain multitudes? Not necessarily those multitudes that our society says are most important, but rather the multitudes that our Lord Jesus contains those that he grants in turn to us. 
a multitude of love, a multitude of grace, a multitude of righteousness. Jesus' disciples discussed this at length, it seems. They weren't of one common opinion on what it meant to follow in the footsteps of their master, on what it meant to allow his undeniable greatness to rub off on them. They knew enough about Jesus, though, to know that they should discuss these things in private, just out of earshot of the Christ, as they walked together from town to town on the dusty roads of Galilee. They kept this hidden, I think, because they knew that what they were seeking was something approaching earthly greatness. The greatness of the political leaders sitting in Rome and Jerusalem. The greatness of the temple elite. The greatness of the rich landowners and merchants of the day. That kind of greatness, the kind of greatness that the disciples sought, well, it wasn't really the kind of greatness that helped them or would help us to contain Christ and his multitudes. Rather, it's the kind of greatness that impresses people, even if it's hollow. It's the greatness of the city streets that are created for a soundstage, that look great in the film from just the right angle, but turn just a few degrees, and you'll see that the city that looks so grand and impressive is really just made from cardboard and paste, that this great, vast, gigantic city is actually empty and narrow, with raw edges and abundant problems. This is the kind of greatness that the disciples want, according to St. Mark's Gospel. Yet Jesus, our Lord, explains to them that this kind of greatness is not true greatness. It doesn't help us to contain multitudes. What does help us to contain Christ and his multitudes is that truth that is revealed in the cross. The truth that through weakness we become strong. That through poverty, we become rich. That through death, we experience resurrection. Just as he so often does, Jesus turns our human way of thinking on its head. In this Gospel reading, he does so in a very poignant way, I think. Since the disciples had argued about who is the greatest, the biggest, the strongest, Jesus tells them that the true way to be great, big, and strong is not to entertain the powerful and the mighty, but rather to welcome the small, the weak, and the meek. Greatness comes not with bodyguards whose muscles ripple and menace, but with children whose supposed naivete, physical smallness, and weakness betray the deeper truth. That these things aren't actually barriers to greatness, but rather greatness is found within them. That they help us understand the mystery of the cross. The mystery that true greatness is often hidden. Hidden in welcoming a child in Jesus' name. Hidden in a carpenter from Galilee. Hidden in, with, and under bread and wine. Hidden in weakness. Hidden in ancient words. Hidden in love. Hidden in water consecrated by God's word. The disciples, and by extension us, cannot become great by following the ways of the world. Rather, we can become great by following the less trod path of these hidden things.
things that are hidden by our sinfulness, things that are hidden by the topsy-turvy values of the world, things that are hidden by the braggarts and the strong and the powerful. But we can only access them by first accessing Jesus, the one who is the gate, the one whose name is the code word, the one whose grace is the fuel. Through him and his grace, we become great. We contain multitudes. Not so that we might build ourselves up, but so that we might build up him and his kingdom, revealing his counterintuitive and hidden way that leads to the greatest greatness of all, to eternal life, when we will gather together with the saints and angels and martyrs and apostles in the great bosom of our loving Creator, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
that people of our day may come to see clearly that wars and conflicts begin with their own unruly passions and work instead to sow the fruit of righteousness and to cultivate peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for the just ones who are being tested under the persecution of those who hate them for their goodness, that they may remain strong and faithful, knowing that God will vindicate them. Lord, in your mercy, for the gift of wisdom from above, so that we may be pure, gentle, and full of mercy and good fruits in the sight of our Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, for those who feel like they are the last of all, the sick and the poor, the imprisoned and the grieving, that we may receive and care for them as if they were Jesus himself given into our hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. that Jesus, who accepted his death as the path to resurrection, may raise up our faithful departed ones to share his joy and glory in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. we lift all these prayers before your throne, Holy Father, trusting that you hear them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. And now may the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen.
that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.